Hello, my name is Stephanie Toman. This is another video in the series um, to do with the ICDL Advanced Qualification Presentation Software using PowerPoint. Um, this one's going to be looking at the areas of the master slides, really important for day-to-day -day use as well as the qualification as part of the syllabus, and a quick look at templates as well so that you understand how they're saved and where you go to find them, etc. if you want to keep your own designs. So um, master slides, really important to back keeping consistency, saves you having to change every little bit. There can be exceptions to the rule, as you'll find out, and a great way of putting things like logos on so that you can place them on one slide and they show on everything, maybe not the, the title slide. So hopefully you'll enjoy this um, and use it. You can also uh, just be aware that you can use master slides for lots of different presentations so you can have lots of different masters which makes life a lot easier as well or switching between if you've got more than one person presenting. Hope you enjoy. Uh, thank you. Moving on then to slide master. The slide master is as it says here it gives a uniform view to a PowerPoint so in other words all of your headings will be the same font size, the same font and the same colours so everything keeps nice and consistent. You can have the same bullets for level one, the same bullets for level two. You can see that these actually aren't. So you can change all of that within a master slide. So let's just look at the, the next slide and see what we've got. So you can see here, you can select a master slide and you can make all the changes. What you've got to be really aware of is that you're making it the top slide, the master master okay we go back to the previous one this one let's change the way this one looks by using a, a, a slide master so in the view tab up here there is the slide master there if you hover on it it says controls the look of your entire presentation so you don't need to have to change every title every time if you put bullets in and they change you don't need to worry about it and lots of other things that we can do as well in a master so let's go in here first Remember we talked about the master, the main master, so you need to scroll right up and make sure you see the one that's used by majority of the slides, in this case, one, just one to two. If you put it into the other one, it's not going to work. I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. So the main one at the top, you could change this top uh, font here, going back to the home tab, you can make that into 48. We can make it red just so it stands out for us we could change the font to um let's do a comic sans see come on oops trying to get a comic sans to come up maybe an aerial might be better aerial black's really standing out we can make the bullets this first bullet we could actually um do a numbering let's do a bullet so let's do a a large hollow square bullet for the first level. The second level, oops, let's do bullets that are small square bullets. And this one just for fun, if we go to bullets, oops, let's do that again, took it off. Let's go to bullets numbering at the bottom, customize, and let's put a smiley face on that one. There's loads in here. If you go to windings, right towards the end you've got lots of things that you could use telephones there's the windings too as well so we're going to okay and okay that through let's make sure that bullet's on didn't pick it up probably because i was messing around showing you something else there we go so now when we go back to the slide master tab, can move around away from it. So remember, it's always there. And you must close it in order to see the front end of your PowerPoint again. When we do that, notice how they all have the what I've applied. I think there's one I noticed where it didn't. So on the odd occasion, what you could do is probably because it's been put in differently to the others. So you could just make sure that that applies it's because it's been put in as a separate placeholder not very nice i know but i've done it just so that you can see the difference it can make so 
So going back, um, let's leave that in before we go. Let's try um, bringing in uh, what they call a logo or a picture or a graphic. And let's see what happens if we put it on the wrong slide. So we're going to insert, we're going into our folder again. We're going to get our pictures. And we're going to bring in the ostrich, the good old ostrich. Now I'm on the right slide, but let's say I cut that and I was sitting on this slide. And I paste it, it comes in. I thought, oh, I've got it, and I pop it in the corner there, and I reduce it, and let's pretend it's an ostrich logo, and notice how it doesn't sit on each slide. Now, a logo brought through the master slide should be seen on every slide. So I did, in the first sense, go and do the right thing by bringing it in on the master master, and notice how quickly you can see that now on every slide. Remember these graphics, you cannot delete them from the front because they've been inserted through the master. So if you need to remove them, you need to go into the master, slide master all the way to the top. If you go to this one again and try to get it, you can't get it, back up to the main master, click on it, hit the delete key and it will work. I'm just going to undo all of that because it completely ruined the, um, the presentation. And hopefully we're back to some sort of normality. Okay, so let's continue. And we're going to follow this. We're going to open up a new presentation, blank new presentation first. There it is. I'm going to minimise this so that we can see both. I'm going to follow this here. So if we go into view and then slide master, remember to go to the very top slide, the one used by slides main one we're going to change the title placeholder and um, back into the home tab and we're going to go for aerial so it's not far off for aerial rounded empty bold and 48 type it in and then we're going to format the background so format this area here right click make, make sure you're in the format background area and we're going to go for a gradient linear which is on there that's the type and then direction is diagonal top left to bottom right so a diagonal top left bottom right so it's the first one okay so we've done that i haven't seen if it applies to all but let's apply it to all okay good right so while that's there we go back to the other powerpoint and then Drop down onto the next one. The next one talks about master slide date, uh, footer, slide number, placeholders, and changing levels. So back to our, um, we can switch between them here. There we go, haven't named it yet. So what we can do is you can see that on here you've got your dates. Let's bring it up a bit so you can see page number, footer, and date. And in the exam, you don't have to go into the master slide to do these. Um, if we go back, if we go to the slide master and close, we've now taken that, we've got that. When we put in a new slide, title and contents, everything will be affected to that. It's got the consistency. If we go into the insert one, we've actually got this um, header and footer option here. It's date and time on its own, slide number on its own, header and footer. You can do everything. So it's a really easy way of um, putting stuff onto slides without having to go into the master slide and do it. And they consider that as okay. So you don't need to go all the way to the slide master to do that. We're going back into um, our PowerPoint. So back to view and let's switch back over. So we've seen that. I showed the bullets earlier, how you can change all those on a right click. And other things, okay, let's have a look at slide master in action and how that main slide, master of masters, can affect things. So we're just going to follow this. So what we're going to do is go for a new presentation again, a blank one. I'll minimise this so that you can see what we're doing over here. Okay.
this is the main one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the view slide master. We're following this. The main title, up to the main title has got to be this one on the master master. So we're going to do this in Broadway. So home, drop down, type in BR, and then we should be able to find Broadway. Go down a little bit. There it is. So we've done that in Broadway and it's Broadway 50, type it in to make life easier. And then it's talking about the subtitle in the title holder. So it's actually this one. This is your subtitle. It's only one in the title placeholder, the main title slide. So we're going to change this into 36 points and to homey. So go in there, drop down. TA to homey and that one's changed as well. And this is close the master. So back to slide master and close. Okay, so we've got one slide there. It says to add. So I'm going to make sure that when I add it, it's going to be a title and content. And then I can right click and next new slide because they'll all stay as title and content. So we want one, two, three, four. So add three new. So the first one we're going to call it slide one. Second one, they're all following suit to slide three and slide four. Couple of things here. Slide four, if you've got a slide master taking over, and we have in this case, you can actually change one slide on the front, any slide you like, and change that to not meet the slide master if you change it on the front. So if I change this to something else, it won't affect the others. And if I put in a new slide, it won't affect the new slide. So sometimes you can have instances and in the exam where you want a different effect. Don't slide must have taken over on that particular slide. It could be a diagram slide, for example. You want to do something different. The other thing is, if we go to the tier, it's asking us to put in um, title slide in the first one. So I'll stick to what I'm doing before I keep going off on a tangent. And then what it says is it closed. So we're going to, we've done that and we're going back into the master and you can see how things can change. So you can see at the moment, they're all the same, apart from the one I changed, even if we did this one. Slide six. If we go back into the slide master, so back to view, back to slide master. And if we went up to the top one, it's saying, notice how all the titles were changed. So even though we did this one differently before, it's already now we've gone in, clicked in. So if we did this one by um, Aerial Rounded, set back to home, AR, like that. And you might have seen a quick change there. So when I actually come back, to the slide master and close it, everything, even the title slide, gets overtaken, but not the one we did on the front. So it just points out how much control that will have. That main slide, it's really important to use it. Okay, so back to um, our PowerPoint on slide master. Okay, another area that needs to be covered for the syllabus um, and in real life is the uh, areas within the master slide that we haven't done as yet. And that's about inserting a whole new slide master, which would have every um, the same uh, different types of slide layouts in it. But it might be um, that it's completely different, a whole different uh, design. You might modify it slightly to meet your needs. And it can also be um, a slide master that holds another person's um, presentation or PowerPoint within there so they can switch to it when it's their turn to present. So let's have a look at that one first. So if we go into the one that we um, 
did earlier, presentation, we've still got this one. Let's open this up. So if we go into the uh, view again and into the slide master, we looked at what we could do within the slide, but there are some areas that we need to look at for the exam. So with regard to inserting new slide master, I've just talked about it, what it will do. Um, and there's something else alongside, which is called insert layout. And then we're going to be looking at different types of placeholders that you can use for those customized um, slides. So the first thing is, if they, if you click on, away from that, if you clicked on the very top one here and we insert a slide master, it'll still go all the way down to the end because that's where it starts. So this slide master, if you like, might be in, um, let's just try and change them. So we've got a gradient color of blue. And this one, the new one here, could be a gradient color of green. Let's just uh, pull that stop off so we've got green and white okay so you can pull those away so they don't apply so that would be a whole different slide master and you could switch between them if you wanted to do different things the other thing that they may ask you to look at is on the next bit of the slide is inserting a customized slide so if you hover on there if you're not sure in the exam you can always hover on these things if you're not sure so you've got add a custom layout to the master slide set so it's something um, you can create and then you can pick up from the slide layout. So if we inserted one, it might say to insert one after the master master, tell you where it wants it. Insert layout, there it is. And this one, we could actually just maybe take the placeholders out. So if we click on the borders of the date holder and delete, and maybe the footer as well. We might just um, change this one to have a bit more green in it. You can see it's staying different to the others. Another area they may ask you to use is to put in a placeholder. There's picture placeholders. So they would be straightforward in uploading a picture. One of the ones that they use um, to be aware of in the exam is a media. So you might have a media when we're going to bring a film in. And if it is about making these particular or specific, there's a format tab that goes with them. And that will give you information about its size. So you might want 8 by 16. You might be asked to do that. You might need it like that to fit your media video in. And your picture you could change as well. So all of these... Um, you can rotate and use the usual things that you do, align, etc. So that's as just customizing that particular one. And you notice it's only got a page number on it. So if we then close the um, slide master back to there and close, if we went into our new slides, We've got the two different. We've got the two different types. You've got your custom layout that we've just created, and then you've got your other slide master there as well. So you can use one or the other or both. And in the layout, you will also, if you right-click there and you um, go to new slide, it'll just bring in a title and content. And this one it follows the one previous. You put it in after a title and content to use new slide because everyone does these all the time but they don't really think about what they're bringing in but if you want to bring in a customized slide then you would go and get that customized layout and there it is ready to go so going back to our presentation our guide if you like through this and um, switching the windows back and you can see that we've covered the inserting layout and then the placeholders is another area too, as well as another master slide. And there it is about picking up um, and using that customized areas of slides because not all of the slides in there will suit our needs. Okay, so that's it there. And then that takes us on to creating templates. Um, so we're gonna have a little quick look at templates. 
So once a template's been used and saved, um, you have to make it go into a particular folder if that's where you want to pick it up again. Um, if you put it into the uh, custom folder, you can pick it up through um, open and new. So when you go into open and new, you have an area where you've got customized um, presentations and you might pick them up from, from the templates there. And if you've created one and saved it in here, you'll be able to pick it up on a regular basis. If I just come back, if we go to our design, we have, um, and you can browse, you could go and browse to your themes if that's what you wanted to do. And on this one, this is our custom design slide that we created called Office. And that's the one we use for the presentations of ECDL to keep consistency. So they can always be popped in there as well. You can add a particular design that you've got, customized design to your gallery. So um, it says insert a slide and content slide in the slide master, change fonts to Georgia, uh, font color. So they're all the different things. It's just running over what we've just done. I'll let you do that and then save as a template to your desktop. So if you're in the exam and you were doing a save as, use the browse again to bring up the dialog box. When you change something into a template, then be aware that it goes to custom office templates. And you can see that there's some in there that um, is normally on your C drive. In the exam, you need these to make, make sure that you are saving your template to the Z drive to make sure that doesn't switch and change. This is where you would pick up um, ones that you want to be picked up by customising. Um, so that's it really in that area. It's pretty much uh, everything with regard to um, templates. And we're just going to look at a couple of other um, options that you can also use in this. So there's an option um, here where you can um, copy and paste text into a slide outline and this is good because you can bring stuff actually from um, a word document so let's have a go at this so we've got a slide one title induction new slides slides from outline and we're going to navigate to a word document called induction so if we just come down here so we've got a new blank presentation let's follow this just bring it over <laughs> So use the um, Word doc induction from the section one preparation folder. So if we click in here and we go into the slide there, there's something called slides from outlines. So we're going to use this feature. Instead of copying and pasting things in, we can actually use this. So we're going to our desktop. I'm going to go to my oops, wrong one, desktop. Pick up my lecture files, week two. Uh, files and then bring an induction and then give it a moment and what should happen is it's actually brought in those pieces of text in an outline format so if we open this up and go to view outline do you remember the quick editing that's where it's dropped it and then it's gone on to separate slides automatically my first one is still blank if we look at the document itself in the work files, let's close that, don't need that anymore. So if we go back uh, in the work files, sorry, there were there, there's the induction. And this is what we just brought in using the outlines feature. Really useful. So instead of having to copy and paste from there onto each slide, um, it's just brought these in and automatically bulleted them, given them headings and then bulleted the other bits. Okay, it worked really well. Another little feature, just close that, that we can look at um, is the next one down, which is about reusing slides. So um, people do once again duplicate or copy or all those things into a, into a PowerPoint. But what you can do is if you can click at the end, let's use our um, slide we just had open here. Yeah. So back to normal view, so we can see the slides, and let's click there. 
and we can go to back to the home and we're still using this new slide so there's our slides from outline and then we can reuse slides so okay so if we use this you reuse slides feature instead of copying and pasting them in we can drop these at the end of this slide so this uh, presentation has a bubbles um, design to it we can pop these in and keep the existing design or we can keep the sourcing and bring them in as they are so it's quite useful um, then they can be hidden and brought out if brought out if they're needed or etc so that's the features both of them in the new slide and their um, slides from outline and reuse slides very very useful so back to our guide presentation there they are. Okay, so the final slide in this week two area to have a look at are the file formats compatible with PowerPoint. So be aware of them, um, particularly one that's been highlighted. A lot, a lot of people don't really know that one. Also, the PowerPoint shows unusual to some, just means it opens straight up in PowerPoint, so you don't need to start it. Um, but the rest are pretty much what we know, popped X, uh, your template PDFs we know, the old PPT and the new PPTX. Okay, so just be aware of all of those. That's the um, final slide on the um, first lecture week two. I'm going to follow this up with the um, weekly revision exercises that are going to be questions one to four. Thank you.